All right, hey guys, OFD checking in here, and today we're looking at one of the newest watches in the Seiko Alpinist lineup. This is the SPB159 here, guys, you see on the hang tag, and you can see the suggested retail on this watch is $700. So this is one of the newer ones in the lineup. It's really cool. It's different because it's so much different than the other um, Alpinists. I have the SBDC087 here, but you notice the elimination of the four o'clock crown, and it does not have the inner rotating orienteering ring. So for a lot of people, that's kind of superfluous. Honestly, for me, I don't use the one at all that's on my watch. I just like it because the way it looks. I think it looks really cool. But a lot of people don't need it and they don't like the extra stuff on a watch if they're not really going to use it. So Seiko did a pretty good job of bringing out this new Alpinist line, sticking to the traditional styles of the watch, but eliminating maybe some of that extra stuff that people weren't really using. So let's talk about the size on this one. Now, this one comes in slightly smaller by about a millimeter than the uh, SBDC087. I'll show them side by side towards the end of the video, but this is 37.7 is what I measured from side to side, not including the crowns. You have 46 lug tip to lug tip on the watch, which is similar. 20 millimeter lug openings, and the watch comes in at uh, 13 millimeters of thickness from the case back to the top of the sapphire crystal. The watch is also running the same movement as any of the other new Alpinists out there, and that being the 6R35 from Seiko. Really killer 24 joule movement. It's a bump up from the 6R15, which is a tried and true movement from Seiko. We've loved that thing over the years, but now they've got the 6R35 and they've bumped the power reserve up by 20 hours. So you're getting a solid 70 hour power reserve out of this watch, which is great. Still beating at a medium beat rate. I call it of 21,600 vibrations per hour. Some people really would like to see that as a high re beat rate, but you lose that that long term, that power reserve by doing that. And also these are, this beat rate has proven to be very uh, manageable, accurate, and easy to regulate. So looking at the dial of the watch, I'll bring it up here a little bit closer, guys. This is the gradient gray dial. As you can see, it's lighter in the middle, fades out darker, got a sand effect to it, and it's really nice. Now, it's funny because the Seiko logo, when you're looking at it straight on, almost looks like it's the same color gray, but if you turn it to the side, you'll see it's actually shiny. It's actually polished on top. I just think it's almost reflecting back off the crystal that makes it look kind of gray, so different. But railroad track style indices around the outside or chapter ring around the outside. The indices themselves are almost a yellower color, almost like a, a faded kind of, um, I guess, vintage style loom, whereas the hands have the brighter white loom on them. The cathedral style hands, which you would expect on a Seiko Alpinist, very traditional on the Alpinist series. And I do like the little orange pip out there on the second hand. You'll notice also that the hands are reaching all the way out to the indices on the watch, which is really really a nice touch. Um, great size watch. Now this particular one comes on the leather strap. Um, different. My SBDC087 comes on a bracelet. I do like the heft and the feel of the bracelets on the watch, but this is a really, really nice done leather strap. You've got the deployment class set up here. Very nicely done, all polished, high quality, really. Um, I've never had a Seiko deployment class, but I'm pretty impressed with the way this one's put together. Looking at the back of the case, you can see through that uh, display case back, you do have the 6R35 movement moving around in there. You can see the rotor with the decoration on it, all in-house from Seiko, which makes this really impressive. Let you know on the back that you have a sapphire crystal on this watch, that these watches are made in Japan. It says it right down here in the corner. So these are going to be Japan assembly watches, um, which is really nice to have. And 200 meters of water resistance. Really cool thing about the Alpinist lineup is their true adventure watches. Screw down crown, screw down case back, give them that 200 meters of water resistance, which I really appreciate it. Now, before we put the watch on the wrist and everything, let's go ahead and look at the two watches together. And you guys will see right away the size difference. For me, I can see the bigger case. I think the crown makes quite a bit of a difference, but this is your more traditional Alpinist size case. These ones are slightly smaller, so if you found these to be a little bit big at 39 millimeters, you might want to look at these new style here. Plus, it eliminates that crown there at the four o'clock position. Another difference you'll see is the Cyclops. The 087 has the Cyclops there at the three o'clock, uh, really making that date pop, whereas you've got the just the outline date window, which looks good on the standard um, Alpinist here, but just different looking watches altogether. So if you wanted to see the size difference there, they are guys you can tell this is a a larger beefier watch i'm a fan of this one but i do think there's a lot of place in the world for this watch i think it's a really good new offering from seiko so let's pause it get this watch on my seven inch wrist and then stick around for the loom shot when i come in at this size close to 38 millimeters it fits the wrist really well love the deployment clasp love the way they've they've done it in this uh, this reminds me of my tudor uh, black bay 41 i used to have the way the the band is set up but it looks really really nice i just think it's a great great looking watch and if you don't need all the extra stuff, the, the second crown, the inner rotating orienteering bezel on the watch, this is probably going to be a better way for you to go 
in the uh, Alpinus lineup. I think it's a really great watch. They've got these out there in a number of different colorways and variations available, so check out what you can find out there. Let's dim it and check out the awesome Seiko Loom on this watch. All right, so being that it's a Seiko Loom should never come as a surprise to you guys. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> Seiko always has really good Loom on their watches, so. But check this out. They're using their own proprietary Blue Loom, which I think is really, really nice looking on this watch. I've gotten a few uh, Seikos recently with this new Blue Loom, and I think it looks really killer. You know, you're not going to have a problem reading this watch at night. Extremely nice, legible Loom plus. The cathedral hands are full of it. The, the tip of that second hand sweeping around there, just everything looks super good. So, all right, guys, this has been the review of the Seiko SPB159 in the Alpinist series, guys. Really cool watch. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up down there at the bottom. And if you've not subscribed to the OFD channel yet, please do. Please do. Thanks, guys.